Welcome back to Global Financial Engineer. I'm Dr. Glenn Brown. In this session for the Global Financial Weekly Video Commentary, I want to look at using the Global Complete Moving, av moving Average Trading System on stock. So we have looked at currencies in terms of forex we have looked at bitcoin before and for those of you who might be watching this video maybe this is the first video you are watching it is good to start from video one where we use the commentary for gold futures but we show you how we develop the global 821 strategy and then in the second video we upgrade that to what we call the global complete moving average trading strategy. There are some persons who would like to just continue to use the 821. That's fine. But in this session, I'm going to show you how you can remain consistent and don't break your trading rule. But before we head over to the practical aspect of this session. The one again to remind you of the risk warning and there we have some major risk in this business and we'd like to bring those to your attention. Also please note that anything that we say here should not be taken as a investment advice nor trading advice. Everything is for educational purposes. You will you make your own trade decision. Um, as indicated to you before, that global financial engineering is a prop trading firm. Who are we really? We are a global multi-asset class professional proprietary trading firm. Important to note that we do not offer any service or product to the general public. We do not accept clients or external funds. But yes, we do have opinion on the market. And we sometimes want to share that opinion with you. And hence we create this channel to give back. But not only to give back, because um, we also use it to train new staff at Global Financial Engineer. So what we are giving you or what you have access to, these are not waste matters. These are meaningful lecture commentaries. So we want to be very transparent here. This business is not easy. We have a lot of hype in this type of business. There's nothing that is sure in this business. You, the only thing you're sure about is your control. What can you control? You can control your emotion. You can remain consistent. You can continue to work hard and to develop your edge. Everything is based on probabilities. There's nothing that is certain. So we want to bring to your attention a few risk warning. And yes, we might discuss trades that seems to be winning trades but please again note that past results are not necessarily indicative of future results i want you to go through the entire risk disclaimer here and this is relevant for both global accountants the institute and global financial engineer i want to pause and give you the opportunity to read through this and then we head over to the technical aspect i will have to uh allow you to read the latter part of it. So I will pause and give you a little time. For those of you who read slow, you can pause the video and then resume and read the latter part. Okay, so we assume that you have been through that. I will just pull up the latter part of the disclaimer for you to go through it. And yes, we'll end up at the CFTC 
rule 4.41 all these are relevant let me give you a moment to absorb this and then we head over to our main objective for the session Okay then, so we'll assume that you have been through our risk warning and we are now ready to dive into the most important section. So let me up over to my platform and I'm using Amazon, symbol A-M-Z-N. And I'm going to start with the daily. That means I'm going to analyze the trade from strategy 7 and the daily. And one of the objectives is to show you that you don't need to break any rule. In order to ensure that we remain consistent, we want to ensure that whenever we enter a trade, we know the type of trade. We know our exit in terms of the worst case situation where we, our hypothesis was totally wrong and want to take the full one hour last. Now, and this you would have note for those who trade the 821 strategy, which is the aqua and the magenta cross here, you would notice that when you enter here, it's a nice flow down, 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 down to here. So a person who are trading the 821's cross over strategy would have entered back Amazon here. And we have been in a downtrend from uh, the latter part of 2022. This was a good cross to the downside, shorting Amazon I'd say 126 and we get down to the low of maybe around 81 okay um so we, we pull nicely down everything is bearish look look at the moving average for those who are doing the complete um strategy you would have entered your trade here because you are waiting for a orderly set of moving average where this is a bearish market sector and how we identify a bearish market sector from top down, we'll see red, which is the 200, green, which is the 100, blue, which is the 50, the magenta for the 21, and the aqua for the 8. So right here, we would have had a complete meltdown of Amazon. Come down nicely, here, 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 here. Now, right here, you could wonder, okay, what should I do? Should I exit the trade? Now, based on our risk model, where when you enter the trade, you are going to put a trailing of nine times the average true range, okay? So let's reason with this. So when you enter this, you will have been trailing down, down, and let the market take you out, okay? But when you reach right here, maybe you would have exit, so you have stopped out. But you might ask yourself the question, should I take this trade? Okay, if you are trading the complete moving average trading strategy, the simple answer is no. If you take this buy, it will be in violation of the setup for strategy seven. Because one, the moving average, this market structure is bearish. And the moving average is not orderly 
in a bullish fashion. So your aim then would have possibly wait for a rally to stall and then you shot Amazon. But you could take this trade without violating the rule. Remember I said to you that when you enter or a hard stop, which become a hard trailing stop, would be a multiple of nine times whatever the average true range is. When you look at this, you could drill down to see which one of the system down to maybe system five, which is for short term, give you a orderly moving average flip to the upside so the market pattern become bullish. Let's drill down. So we st this is like a top-down approach. This is what we call a top-down. So we start from the daily. We could even go to the monthly, but I'm going to stick to the daily here. So the daily, we look at it, we see momentum to the upside. How do you see momentum to the upside? Well, we could even look at the RSI. The RSI is above 50. That's a bullish indication. The stochastic is above 50. The MACD above 50. So in all respect, in terms of those lower confirmation indicator, this has a potential to move to the upside, possibly to even retest the 200 EMA at 114. So how could we get into this game without taking extra risk? We drill down to the next system, which we call this system number one, two, three, four, five, six. We call this system six. Everything we do, we have a name for it is the concept, the framework that we put our decision making in. So if we look at this, while we have um, some form of constructive move on this, we could say that the moving averages that we are using is still not yet orderly. Remember here, we are not trading the 821 cross. We are trading the full complete system. So we are trading what we call the global complete moving average trading system. So here, looking at this, we could drill down to the short term system. Remember here, daily we deem it to be long term, four hour medium, and one hour short term. This could give us an entry into the market. Because we'd have known here then, and this 821 cross and the one hour, we see that the 8 is above the 21, 21 above 50, 50 above 100, 100 above 200. But note carefully, they are all sloping up, all sloping up. Let's look on the confirmation indicators. The MACD, we want to uh, get bullish above zero. The RSI above 50, matter of fact, it is 60. And the stochastic is in the 90s. This could be a bullish move. So we would take this trade and this trade go long for Amazon is a short term trade. Our stop loss will be nine times the average true range. The average true range here is giving me 0.93 and we could go to the extreme here. 0.93 okay so what are we saying here if we take this trade and assume that we have entered assuming that we have entered at 96.28 right on the break of this bar okay this way our stop loss would have been the fact that it is 0 0.0 0 0.9300 we want to use let me use the basic calculator to show that you can calculate. It's not difficult. So our stop loss would have been the 96.28 minus 9 times 0 0.9300. Close that bracket. So we'll see that this is coming to be 8.37. So your risk 
per unit would have been $8.37. When we take it from the 96.28, we get 87.91. So I want to place a horizontal line to mirror that. 87.91. So I just place any line. I double click on it. Go to uh, here. Right here. I want to just change the value. And you see how we get that. I calculated 87.91. So I want to put 87.91. Okay. So this would have given me where my stop loss would have been. So if I enter this, say Friday, and this rally, my stop is here. Note carefully that the stop loss is below the market structure, which is an advantage to you. Because if you put the stop loss within the market structure, the probability um, increase in terms of you getting stopped out prematurely. And hence, this at 87 uh, is a good stop loss in the sense that as this advance, this stop will be moving up. So technically, you'll be trailing your stop by 9 times 0.93. Remember, we are using the average true range and multiply it by 9. And that gives you what I call the trailing stop distance. Okay? So when we take that trailing stop distance, um, that is technically our risk. And if the market moves, we could see Amazon going back to 112. And then we could take that short term trade. If you look at the difference between the short, medium, and long term, is your risk. The medium term is at a higher risk, but we could not take a trade and obey um, here and this because we would have been in violation of the market structure. But we could go down here with a lower risk as the risk here and this time frame would have been 9 times 2.26. So this is nearly $20 as compared to our risk here where we are risking $8 plus. Okay? So... The difference is, how much do you risk on a short-term trade? How much do you risk on a medium-term trade? And how much do you risk on a long-term trade? A long-term trade requires more room. You should be able to take correction. So corrective wave should not take out your stop in a long-term trade. And that's why we use the stop loss to be a function of the trading time frame, the validity within the trading time frame. In future lecture, I'll be looking at a new concept that I developed called the validity exposure period. And the same concept where we take the multiplier of 9 and multiply by the average true range of the period that we are trading. So yes, we are bullish on Amazon in the short term, okay? But I wouldn't say I'm bullish in the medium, now the long term. And for the current market sector, especially um, if traders don't have enough capital, then I, I don't recommend for you to go down to micro trend, okay? So if you look, day one hour give me short term trend, the four hour give me medium term, and the daily give me long term. Anything below the one hour is deemed to be micro trend. Later on, we'll show you how we can trade it. Yes, we can, but I prefer to keep focus at this stage. And um, let's allow the highs to get familiar with the market structure in terms of these lines. In the global algorithm trading system, we have the same concept only that we create bonds within the market structure okay so we have different bonds so we don't have a gap between the moving average like what you see here 
Um, maybe later on, after you get this concept, we could introduce you to the global algorithmic trading um, system. That system is a algo. It's uh, automated, which means that we don't need to press buy and sell stuff so like here. Um, or oh, let me show you how we could place that order. Straight up, go on new order. If that's not the case. And we'll have determined later on in the video, I'm going to show you how we get that position size by using the stop loss along with the risk parameter. But assuming that we get always that stop to be 87.91, you'd have put 87.91 here. Okay. Now, standard, we are going for a reward to risk ratio of three to one. Okay, so we I normally say R to R. Okay, stay see me now. This is going to be a little bit technical. I'm just introducing you to, to this concept. This is three to one. What does this mean? Whatever the risk, we target three times. So our profit take, let me show you how we're going to get our profit take. I want to go back to my calculator. Everything's around these two. The risk is nine times the average true range, which is 0.93. If I aim for three to one reward risk ratio, it means that the reward is three times nine times 0.93. So let me show you how we could calculate that profit target. Stay with me. It means that when I enter the trade at 96, uh, 28, the profit will add to this level to meet the target. So the target would have been equal to the price plus the profit or the reward, which we are going for three to one. So this is how you do it. We take the price, which is 96. 28. We want to add the profit element, which is three times the risk. So three times the risk was nine times the average true range. So it's three times nine times the point nine three. Close that. So if you look here, we are aiming for $25.11, okay? While we risk, earlier on we indicate that we are risking $8 plus. So the target then would have equal to $121.39. So my profit here, I'm gonna put $121.39. And when I do this and place the market by, I have nothing to do again. For those of you who don't know how to uh, do the position size yet, they're going to form a trail. Then sometimes you can start with the minimum contract size. Okay? So if you look though, the, the, the idea in this session is that you know how to set this up and now you know how to set your profit target. We aim for a reward to risk ratio of three to one. In the global algorithmic trading system, we don't need to do this. The system automatically calculate the profit, calculate the stop, and calculate the position size. This leads us to the end of this video. I hope it was informative. We touched on a little bit of a technical stuff here. If you don't understand it too much, don't worry. We're going to do thousands of these videos for you, show you how you apply a basic complete system to any financial market. Until my next session, Dr. Brownie is saying, happy trading.